During the eye inspection, observe the alignment and symmetry of the eyes. Also, examine the eyebrows and closely inspect the eyelids. Normally, the upper eyelid covers a portion of the iris, but does not overlap the pupil. Inspect the area over the lacrimal gland and lacrimal sac for swelling. To inspect okay. the conjunctiva and sclera, ask the patient to look up as you depress the lower lids with your thumbs. Normally, the palpebral conjunctiva is pink and uncongested. The bulbar conjunctiva is transparent with vessels running through it, and the underlying sclera is white. With oblique lighting, inspect each cornea and lens for opacities. To do this, shine a pen light from the side toward the eye. You should see no opacities. Even without side lighting, you may notice a corneal arcus in an older patient. This normal variation is a white ring around the periphery of the cornea. Carefully inspect each iris and pupil. Normally, iris markings are clearly defined, and the pupils are round and equal in size. Just look straight ahead and into the distance. Mm -hmm. Continue assessing the pupils by checking their reaction to light. Observing one eye at a time, ask the patient to look into the distance. Then, from the side, shine a bright light into one eye and observe its pupillary response. The pupil should constrict briskly in direct reaction to the light. Now shine the light into the same eye again, but observe the pupillary reaction of the opposite pupil. It should constrict briskly in a consensual response. Repeat the process with the other eye. Watch for direct and consensual pupillary reactions again. If the pupillary light reaction is abnormal or questionable, Test the near reaction. Hold your finger or a pencil about 10 centimeters from the patient's eyes and tell her what to do. Now Watch for pupillary finger. dilation with distant gaze Head and pupillary distance. constriction with near effort. Repeat look this test finger. if necessary and then repeat it in the other eye. Now 